first thing I wanted to ask you, Patchy, is, you know, here you are at the, you know, the final, of course, of the Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Million dollars is up for grabs. I know you thought about what you'd do with it. So tell me, what what might that be? Um, You know, I'd like to buy my mom a house. Um, You know, buy a house for myself, obviously, in Buffalo. Buy my, you know, just buy like a big house for my, me and my family, basically. Um, You know, just take care of, take care of my family. That's really it. You know, I don't have anything like, specifically besides buying a house so I could put my mom in it besides that um I don't have like a I like my car you know I like um all the things you know that I have my daughter has everything you know she's spoiled as hell um so just maybe help my brothers and sisters out um help out you know anybody that needs it in the family and um you know that's really it you know I'm excited for it I'm I'm more looking forward to uh, the belts of course, of course. And, you know, obviously this was, this is not your first time trying to fight for the belt. You had the chance a few years ago, you know, it didn't go your way against Juan Archuleta, you know, the, the first round was starting your way, of course, and kind of, you know, kind of went the other way, but what went wrong in that fight? Actually, I wanted to ask you. Uh, just my preparation, you know, um, the first two rounds I had won and the last three I lost, um, just preparation. I feel, um, better prepared, um, a better mindset, a better camp. You know, I would have uh, um, had better results. It was time when we were during COVID. So, like, the, a lot of the gyms were, like, under real strict, um, uh, like, let's say, um, occupancy, like, with my training partners and such. So now, like, I just have more momentum. Like, I'm able to train full time. I'm able to do this full time and put my all into it. And um, I think now, three years later, I'm just a whole nother fighter, a whole new animal. And I really feel I should be able to prove that in eight days. Now you, you were only about four years into your pro career at that point too. Was inexperience kind of a part of that too? Yeah, I feel um, inexperience um, um, due to me being able to finish people so fast. I have so many first round finishes and I finish people so much that I don't have at that time in my career. If you looked at how much cage time I actually had, it equated to maybe like, let's say three or four full fights. So it was just because I finished so many people so fast. I didn't really get a lot of rounds that I needed to um, get the experience I needed now to compete against someone that's of such high level in Juan or Chuleta. Was there any one specific lesson you kind of took away from that fight that you're like, okay, I've experienced this now, this five round fight, championship fight. Like what, what did I take? What did you take away from that? Um, pacing myself in cardio. Um, pace, um, believing in... Um, believing in myself, the pace, the cardio, and um, it, it helped me change those things. And it helped me believe that I'm, you know, I'm there. Um, my rise to fame was so fast and it was so quick in Bellator. Um, I got a title shot in six minutes in the promotion. So I was only, it took me six minutes to beat three people. I got a title shot very fast. And um, I didn't know if I believed in myself, more importantly. And what I took from that fight now I could take now is my self-belief. Um, I truly believe that I should be um, – I truly believe that I am one of the best bantamweights. I am the best bantamweight in the world and most dangerous bantamweight in the world. And um, I truly believe that I should be at this world title spot as opposed to my last time. You know, I didn't know. I was unsure. I was uncertain. This time I'm very certain. Right. Well, yeah, of course, you won a couple fights in the tournament as well, and including a five-rounder. Uh, over Kyoji Hiraguchi, the former champion. So that must have done a lot for your confidence. Yeah, it, um, it uh, elevated me to another level, and it showed me that, um, you know, I can beat world champions and I can be a world champion. Kyoji Hiraguchi was a world champion for many years. He was a rising world champion as well. Um, coming off that win, and then also I beat another world champion who was um, a Russia world champion, um, Magomed Magomedov. So having wins over other world champions from other organizations that helped me um, with my self-belief. It helped me with my, um, you know, the momentum that I had. You talked about finishing guys very early. You know, you are, you are known as a finisher, but you know, a lot of people with wrestling backgrounds, kind of like yours, they fall in love with their hands. They go for knockouts. You went the other way. You're a submission ace. What kind of lured you in that direction? Um, Because like, I wasn't a um, uh, conventional wrestler. I was very uh, crafty. I had a lot of pins. I used to do a lot of stuff un unorthodox. I was very, very good. Um, top rider. You know, I could turn people, almost anyone. 
Um, I hit a lot of spladles, a lot of cradles, um, a lot of stuff that, um, you know, transitioned well to MMA because I was really good on the back. I was good at running legs and wrestling. But I started um, MMA so young. I was like 15 years old. And I started doing wrestling and MMA kind of similar at the same time. So um, I was always good at submitting people. I've been submitting professional fighters since I've been 15 years old. And of course, being a grappler, I'm sure you had a, just a wonderful experience with this. You shared pictures recently. You were training with UFC lightweight champion Islam Makachev. What was that like grappling with him? One of the best in the world. Uh, it's great, man. Um, I train with so many great guys. Um, I train with a lot with Islam Makachev. I train with Umar Nuragamagov as well. Um, he's 15-0 at my 16-0 at my weight. Um, he's in the UFC as well. Um, you know, so many great champions, so many great guys. Um, it's always good to pick their brains and be able to work and, um, just iron sharpens iron, you know, you go against these good guys and, um, I'm one of the best in the world as well. You know, I'm highly touted pound for pound, one of the best grapplers in MMA right now. So when I could go against one of the other ones, you know, it's fireworks in the training room. Like people would pay to be a fly on the wall for that, you know, for them sessions, so it's um I'm grateful and I'm blessed, you know, to be able to work with dominance and have my manager as, you know, Ali Abba Disease. Of course, of course. And now there's only one person that stands in the way of you joining some of these people, getting a championship yourself, Ralphion Stotts. And now it's the interim title still, of course, but, you know, you've got a few key advantages over him here in your height, your length, uh, and you're five years younger as well. How do you see kind of your two skill sets matching up? Um, I think my skill set will trump his. I think he's good, you know. Um, I'm I'm prepared for war. I'm prepared to go through, you know, hell and back to um earn my um earn my world title, to earn the million dollars and to um to earn that uh Grand Prix uh title as well. I feel like our um our uh, skill sets match up very similar, but I I just feel like I'm younger. I, I will trump his style. Um, he does a lot of things that he does well. I think I do a lot better. So I'm excited to go out there and, um, you know, uh, test my skills against his. And of course, you know, there's not a whole lot of like bad blood per se. You know, you guys are saying things, of course, about being confident and winning. But this is this is very much seems like a competitor versus competitor and nothing more. Is that how you like it? Yeah, man, it's competitor versus competitor. To be honest with you, he has a family and so do I. So I don't really personally know him. Um, I want to beat him because he thinks he can beat me. And, you know, um. He's been running his mouth a little bit on the internet, but I think he just, that's his insecurities talking. Um, you know, I, I, I just, um, for me as competitor versus competitor, it's always like that. I think when I shy away from that and I get into these, um, personal things, I, it just takes away from my skills and my fight. You know, I don't need any extra added anxiety towards this. You know, I'm very secure with myself, my skills, and um, I truly believe in my heart that I can beat him, and I truly believe I will finish him. So this fight's in Hawaii. This is not your first time in Hawaii. That's where you beat Horiguchi. Did you get the chance to enjoy, you know, being in Hawaii last time? And will you this time? Last time I left the next day, um, and I had to limp my way to the airport. Horiguchi kicked my legs up, and or I think I kicked him in the elbow or something. My leg was blown up. So it was tough last time, but this time... Um, no, we're going to stay a couple of days. I'm hoping to win a million dollars, enjoy it with my friends, my family, and, um, you know, take advantage of it. being in Hawaii, being, you know, somewhere so beautiful and, um, you know, just the experience. You know, I want to walk around with my belts for a couple of days afterwards. Are you going to walk around with it on? Is that how you think you would do it? I won't do it like that the whole weekend or something, but I definitely will bring it around. You know, I'm sure there'll still be people there the next couple of days after the fight. So I'll be able to communicate and show them or like, you know, there's will be a lot of people that are fans. You know what I mean? I'm sure that would want to see the belt. So if I'm there, you damn right. I'm going to be bringing it around with me. Um, but I won't be carrying that thing around with me all like that. I'll probably frame it. You know, who knows? I might give one away to one of my family members, my coach, some, who knows? I'm just, um, this is first of my, this will be first of many belts for me. Um, and um, I'm just looking forward to my second opportunity um, to do this one correctly. Um, like you said, I had one shot at the uh, belt before and like LeBron James or, you know, not everyone's like Michael Jordan, you know, some of these guys, it takes them a couple of times to get their rings. And, um, I think I'll have many. So this is my second chance at the world title. And I really want to take advantage of that. I want to soak it all in. And, um, uh, with this finals, you know, it comes such an opportunity and, um, 
I really want to live in the moment and uh, take advantage of the opportunity because, uh, you know, it's once in a lifetime that I'll be there with, you know, fighting in the Grand Prix Finals Hawaii. All your friends and family you have a chance to gather two belts real quick, a million dollars. It's some, it's an amazing, um, amazing opportunity. And I'm blessed to have it. Of course, this is the final of the tournament, but there's almost like an extra layer to it because now we have Sergio yeah. Pettis is coming back. He's going to defend, you know, the primary belt, I guess you could call it, against Patricio Pitbull, the featherweight champion. What do you think of of Pettis defending that title against someone outside of the tournament structure? Normally, I wouldn't. I normally, I kind of would maybe get upset if I didn't see um, who it was. Like if it was another bantamweight, I would say, you know, I probably would raise hell. Like he wasn't in the tournament. How did he get the opportunity? But since it's someone so worthy of Patricio Pitbull, I don't mind. You know, I want to fight. In the end of it all. I want to fight the best guys and Patricio Pitbull's number one. So if he goes down and beats Sergio Pettis, I go out there and stamp myself a super fight against pound for pound number one. That sounds amazing to me. And if he doesn't beat Pettis, Pettis will beat him and he'll be pound for pound, you know, number one or two. So either way, I have an opportunity to fight, you know, who they deem is, you know, one of the best in Bellator you know, after this fight. So I'm super excited to have the opportunity. Um, each fight, I only wanted to get bigger. This one's for a million dollars in the interim belt. What would be even sweeter? You know, in my perfect world, it would be to fight the reigning featherweight champion, Patricio Pitbull, if he were to get it done against Sergio Pettis, you know, in a super fight at the end of the year. That would be amazing. Now, assuming you win, you know, you're, you take care of your business. When do you think you'd want to get back in there for the unification bout? Because obviously that will happen next. That would be the next step. It wouldn't matter to me, man. You know, I, I don't mind. Um, I would just be on Bellator's, um, on their watch. Like, I, I work very well with Bellator. You know, they're, what they're doing. I love what Scott Coker's doing. Um, you know, I, I'm real tight with the promotion. Like, um, whenever they would need me, you know. They've given me this opportunity They've kept me busy, you know, putting me in the tournament. I fought last April, now December, now April. That's three fights in a scheduled year. Um, I have a million dollars in the bank account, you know, and um, I would stay ready for them, you know. Who knows? Maybe I'm healthy and they use me as a backup for that Chicago card. You know, who knows? You never know. Um, but I'll be ready for the unification bout after this fight next Saturday. Um, my eyes are totally on Luffy on Stotts. Um, Solely there right now and next Saturday night, like laser focus after I get through him, they will shift immediately to those two guys. And um, just like I think about Rufian Sats now, I'm sure I'll be thinking about one of those two. Got it. Got it. And before I let you go, I wanted to ask you your significant other, Tatiana Suarez. She got off to a great start this year, came back after a four year layoff, got the win over in the UFC. How inspiring it was it for you to see her overcome those obstacles for her own return? It was great to see Tatiana um, come back, you know, get a submission, in true form. I, you know, obviously she got the guillotine, which was cool, too, because, you know, I'm a guillotine expert. And we've been working on that a lot with her jiu-jitsu and um, just training. Like, me and her train so much together where um, we constantly are grappling and, um, you know, tweaking, you know, helping each other out. So it was cool to see, and um, it was cool to see behind the doors. You know, I know how much she – how hard it was. I know how much she struggled over these last um, – you know, 12 to 18 months. Um, and, uh, you know, I was there every day with her. So it was cool to um, be there, you know, when she was, um, you know, she, when I met her, Tatiana had to relearn how to walk. So even in her lowest of times, you know, to uh, when she got back and um, it was good to be there right by her side. You know, I was um, happy that I wouldn't have rather been nowhere else uh, beside cage side right there for her. It was a little nerve wracking for me, obviously, because um, I'm used to fighting. So it's no control, but, um, you know, I, I trust out of everyone I've ever cornered or anything. I've trust, I trust Tatiana more than anybody. Cause I know she's, pre she's more prepared than anyone. She, um, she really puts her, uh, her entire effort into her camps. Um, she doesn't cut corners. She trains like an, a world champion Olympic athlete as she's been. So, um, I just, uh, you know, she's, um, She's very inspiring, and I believe she's going to come back and do great things.
You know, one more thing too, because you'd posted uh, about you two on Valentine's Day, a little tribute to her, and you called it a love story that started at High Rollers BJJ hot dog stand. What's the story there? Yeah, I met her at the High Rollers. Um, it was an event, you know. I was we were both in Vegas, so um, I think I just asked her to buy her a hot dog at the um the stand there. So you know, it was um she was with her friend Rachel, so um I had seen her, you know, from across um you know, at high rollers. So when we met, it was good. And, um, you know, that's our story. So, you know, it's, it's, it's ever since then, you know, we're so compatible and we do have so much, you know, we're so alike in so many ways. It's, it's a good thing. Um, especially for our careers. So, um, you know, we support each other and, um, she'll be there in my corner next Saturday supporting me. And, um, there'll be no doubt we're walking with those belts, you know, She'll probably be she'll probably be uh, carrying one for me. You know what I mean? Excellent. I don't really care about you know. For sure, for sure. Well, hey, listen, I'm gonna let you go, Padgy. Thank you very much for the time. I wish you the thank very you, best brother. of luck in your fight, and we'll talk again after that when you're the champion. Appreciate you, brother. Always.